So I'm Dr. Mike Wood. I work at the University of Salford, which is in Manchester. I'm a senior lecturer there. I'm also a radio ecologist. So my research life is all about understanding the way in which radionuclides behave in the environment, the way they transfer through the environment, and the way in which wildlife, animals and plants are exposed to radiation. We are all being exposed to radiation right now. Radiation that's coming from the solar system, cosmic radiation. We have terrestrial radiation from the Earth underneath your feet. We've got natural radionuclides in the building materials that surround you. Radioactivity is in the food that you eat. It's in your bodies. You are all walking sources of radioactivity. We're talking about emissions, radioactive emissions. And we have three principal types. We have alpha particles, which are these large radioactive particles, pack a big punch, it's basically a helium nucleus. We have beta particles, so for example, electrons. And we also have gamma photons. How we protect people from radiation. We need to think about the nature of radioactivity as a contaminant versus something like chemicals, which many people are much more familiar with. So what's one of the, the fundamental differences between the two? Well, to illustrate it, I'd like to start by getting you all to look at this bottle. Now I assure you, it is a bottle of water. <coughs> but for now, I'd like you to pretend that this is a bottle of sulfuric acid. I'm going to put the bottle sealed over there. I'm going to come over here. If I stand here with that sealed bottle of sulfuric acid over there, am I being exposed to the sulfuric acid now? Correct, I'm not being exposed to it. Fundamental difference between chemical and radioactive contaminants is that for a chemical contaminant, you have to be in physical contact to be exposed. Now that physical contact can be that you ingest it. Physical contact can be that you touch it. Physical contact could be through inhalation of vapors. In any of those instances, there is direct physical contact, you can get exposure. Now, this sealed bottle contains a mixture of gamma emitting radioactive isotopes. I shall stand over here. Am I being exposed to the radiation within that bottle? Gamma yeah. photons coming out of this travel through air quite happily, and I am being exposed to the radiation that's coming from that. Let's have a look at the way in which gamma photons move, and let's think about the things that we can do to reduce exposure to gamma photons. Now, I'd like one volunteer from the audience to come up and join me on stage to help me with this experiment. Excellent, thank you very much. Have you been involved with a live stage experiment before? No. Are you apprehensive or are you excited? Bit both. <laughs> if I say that I'm going to get you to control an unstable radioactive nucleus, which is releasing gamma photons, would you be comfortable with this? Absolutely. <laughs> going to use the Nerf gun to represent an unstable radioactive nucleus, which is going to release gamma photons which fly through the air. We're going to experiment with our concepts of time, distance, and shielding. In a second, I'm going to ask you to unleash your gamma photons at radioactive man. This area here, the black area, is where those gamma photons are going to be received. It takes about seven seconds to fire all of those gamma photons. <laughs> Let's see how many gamma photons were absorbed. 18, 18, 19, 20 gamma photons, all absorbed by radioactive man. Now this time, rather than seven seconds, you're going to have three seconds to do this. The idea is we're reducing the duration of the exposure and seeing what that happens in terms of the number of gamma photons that are absorbed. Go, three, two, one, stop. Six, seven, 
eight, nine gamma photons have now been absorbed by radioactive man. So we reduce the duration of exposure, we reduce the number of gamma photons that are absorbed. That's experimenting with time. Let's have a think about distance. Well, the distance at the minute is about three and a half meters. So we've already figured out that we get 20 photon hits at three and a half meters. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to move radioactive man to seven meters distance. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's the ones on the black that count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine gamma photons hit at the increased distance. So by increasing the distance, we have reduced the exposure to gamma photons. Now we're going to offer radioactive man the opportunity to use some shielding to help protect him. So if we can have the shields come on stage. We've got two shields to test out today. Now, the keen-eyed amongst you will notice that there are a couple of differences between these shields. We have a green shield and a red shield, but you will also hopefully see that there is a different amount of shielding provided by each one. This has less shielding. So what we'll do is we'll give less shielding to radioactive man. So how many hits have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What happens if we give radioactive man some additional shielding? <laughs> One, two, three. Three hits on radioactive man. So you can see that we've gone from nine gamma photons being absorbed by radioactive man down to three as we've increased the amount of shielding. So we've shown that if you reduce the duration of exposure, then you reduce the number of gamma photons that hit. If you increase the distance between the source and the target, you reduce the number of gamma photons that hit. And if you increase the amount of shielding, you reduce the number of gamma photons that hit. Now in radiation protection, we don't do these things in isolation. Often these things work in combination. So we're going to give you one more go at shooting radioactive man. This time, we're going to put radioactive man at seven meters with his shield. You are going to have three seconds. Three, two, one, stop. He is protected. <laughs> we use the principles of time, distance, and shielding to help reduce radiation exposure and ensure that people can work safely with radioactive materials. I'd like to thank all of you for being a great audience.